Hey, thanks everybody for being here. Um, really excited to be talking with you all about something that I am super passionate about and love spending time talking with folks and working with my team on. Um, we're gonna be talking about layout paragraphs. It's a module on Drupal.org. By the end of the session, you should have everything you need to decide if layout paragraphs is right for your next project. And if you decide it is right for your next project, hopefully, uh, everything you need to get started working with it. My name is Justin. So a little bit about me real quick. Um, I'm the founder and CEO at Atten Design Group. We're a strategy design development company. We work with mission-driven organizations all over the world to help plan, design, build, support, maintain, and grow digital platforms, uh, products, websites, web applications. Most of our clients are in the .org, uh, .gov, and .edu domains. Super excited to be here this week. It's awesome to be back at DrupalCon. We are on the exhibit floor. Come see us. We're at booth 103. Uh, we're doing sketchbooks again. The Portland edition looks really cool, so come pick one up. Um, for those of y'all who haven't had one of our sketchbooks, we've been doing that for, yeah, there's one. <laughs> doing that for a decade or more, which has been fun. Uh, we're also giving away an iPad and ear pods for folks who want to share an email address. Um, again, really excited to be here, so come hang out. We'd also love to continue the conversation on anything we're talking about today and anything else web and Drupal related. Uh, before I get started, I just want to talk a little bit about um, why this subject is so interesting to me and kind of what got us here. I started Atten back in 2000, directly out of college. Um, almost 22 years ago. We actually turned 22 in just a couple weeks, so that's a pretty exciting milestone. Uh, we've been using Drupal for most of those years, since 2006. That's 16 years ago, that was version 4.6. Yeah, seriously. Um, as a lot of y'all know, a ton has changed with the product since way back then. Um, there are three things I want to touch on that I think haven't changed that are still important today and just as important, just as big a draw to Drupal today as they were back then. Keep this real quick. The first is just the incredible community, of course, behind Drupal. It is so awesome and just such a, an honor to still be involved in the Drupal community again 16 years later. It's just as exciting today as it was back then. Um, this, diver this community is, is huge and very diverse and doing very interesting things. And I think it's exactly that that creates this second thing that hasn't changed. And that's that Drupal is really good at doing a lot of different things for a lot of different people. It's incredibly flexible, really capable. And then the third thing that I, I think hasn't changed about Drupal is that while it's flexible, while it's incredibly powerful, Drupal is still at the end, in the end, all about content. Drupal is a content management system. For us, this is critical. For our clients, content and mission are often one and the same. Uh, for us to help be force multipliers for our clients and drive their mission forward, we've got to get the content right. Drupal does a really good job of that. I think, in my view, there's an important but really simple reason that Drupal is so good at working with content. That is the structured content model. Structured content, according to Wikipedia, described very simply as information or content that is organized in a predictable way. Wikipedia goes on to say, often accompanied by metadata, which is what drives th this idea of structured content plus metadata is what drives, in my view, so many of the systems that we work with in Drupal every day. It's what makes migrations possible, the views module possible, content types, fields, create once, publish everywhere, headless, decouple applications, all that's driven by this very simple idea of structured content. I think something that has happened along with structured content, and when you combine structured content with the sheer flexibility in Drupal, it creates a lot of complexity. And that complexity has spilled into the authoring experience, into uh, the interfaces that authors actually use. And it's created what I think is a bit of an irony that while Drupal is so good at working with content, it can be so difficult for content people to work with Drupal. And that's something that we've been uh, focusing a lot on at my agency. Um, I know a lot of other folks are working on this as well, and there's a lot of work, a lot of really interesting work happening in that authoring experience space. 
But that's the framework that I kind of want to speak from today, specifically talking about this module layout paragraphs as a really easy to use drag and drop authoring tool that again works within this framework of structured content. So what we will cover specifically, we'll start real simply with what is layout paragraphs. Just for a quick frame of reference, how many folks here have used layout paragraphs? That's, wow, that's really awesome. Actually, how many folks have used paragraphs? Cool, okay, great. So this will be very applicable. Uh, so first, what is par layout paragraphs? We'll get into features and kind of what it is, what it does. Second, it is a Drupal module. I want to talk a little bit about current status and adoption, so who's, who's using it and how's it doing. Uh, third, we'll do a quick demo of layout paragraphs right out of the box with the Drupal 9 site that I installed on my local machine last week. It'll be a live demo. I'm sure it'll go great. <laughs> Y'all don't seem so convinced. <laughs> um, <laughs> Then I'm gonna demo uh, a customized version of layout paragraphs. Um, I'll get into this a little more in a minute, but something that was real important to us is that this framework is really customizable. And we'll look at some of those customizations in the setting of our own agency website and kind of take a look at what it looks like to create content there and give you a sense for what's possible. The demo shouldn't take too long. There should be plenty of time for questions and discussion. Uh, so really looking forward to answering whatever questions come up. Really quick, some pre-rec pre -rec, uh, concepts that would be helpful. We've already, I mean, I already kind of touched on this a second ago. One, of course, experience using Drupal. We're not gonna get too much into the basics of uh, setting Drupal up, et cetera. Experience with the paragraphs module is helpful for some of these concepts. Looks like almost everyone here has worked with the paragraphs module, so that's great. Content types and fields, experience configuring and working with those is a plus. And finally, Working with users, roles, and permissions is helpful, although to be honest, I don't think we're gonna uh, have, I, I don't think I'm gonna get much into the user uh, and permissions side of layout paragraphs. All right, let's talk a little bit about what layout paragraphs is. Again, first and foremost, it is a Drupal module. You can just go download it. You can download it right now. Uh, it provides a low or no code drag and drop content authoring experience built on top of paragraphs, on top of the paragraphs module. Uh, it was very important to us as we started working on this approach and developing uh, layout paragraphs that we did not sacrifice the whole idea of structured content. And it still works within that, the idea of the, co the structured content model. It does that by leveraging paragraphs, which is essentially a collection of fields that can be attached to uh, an entity. Along with that, we wanted to leverage familiar workflow configuration with things like fields, field widgets, field formatters, all of these conventions that we're all familiar with in Drupal. We wanted a tool that does not require migrations. Um, I hesitate to say it, but you can just turn it on and it works. Well, I think, uh, we'll see. And then uh, we wanted something that provides APIs for further improving the authoring experience. We'll get into a little bit of that when I show some of the stuff on our agency site, kind of what that looks like. I'm gonna ask one more question. How many folks here have seen me do a demo of this already? Okay, cool. Uh, this is gonna be a repeat for a lot of you. <laughs> um, cool, so current status and adoption, I mean, this keeps ticking up. Uh, well, first of all, um, again, it's a module, said it like 100 times. Drupal.org slash project slash layout underscore paragraphs. Couple releases. I think the 1X release is still the most widely used in production right now. Um, it just has the biggest user base. 2X is a complete rewrite. We're up to beta nine. There is a stable release eminent. To be honest, I've been saying that for a little while now. Um, some of that is pinned, uh, we're, a, we're a client services agency and some of that is pinned to client work for us. And there are a few APIs that we're still kind of um, tweaking just a little bit as we near launch for some client projects. But in our view, 2X is completely ready for production. Um, it is superior to the 1X branch in many ways. One of them is just automated test coverage. So for 1X, we're relying on bug reports and on incident reports, which have slowed way down. Uh, for 2X, virtually 
all functionality available in the module has automated tests with it that ship every time we push code. All new features ship with new tests. Um, all bug fixes actually ship with new tests. So a lot of re really good t uh, test coverage, which is definitely a confidence boost. Usage continues to grow. We just bumped up over 3,000 installs according to um, Drupal.org. These stats are always a little weird, but provide definitely a good benchmark for how this has grown over the last year and a half. Um, really cool to see all the interest in this module. I mean, really awesome to have such a full room today and just see all the interest for this. So uh, really great stuff. Again, available on Drupal.org for download. All right, that's the background. Let's jump into a simple demo. So I'm gonna be talking a lot about case studies. I'm gonna start with some really basic stuff, just like a basic article page. Look at something that we've all seen 100 times in Drupal. Um, the premise is pretty simple. You know, what if we want to tell the story of some work we did for a client in the form of a case study? Straight out of the box with Drupal, we can do something with like an image field, a content field. If I go into the edit form, this is super straightforward. All of this speaks in my mind directly back to the idea that content should be structured. It is designed ahead of time. We can predict the structure of the content. It has a body field. Um, an image field, we could associate tags, you know, title, et cetera. I mean, this, of course, content type, which comes directly out of the box when you install Drupal, is incredibly predictable. It definitely checks that box. Things get a little more interesting, of course, if I want to tell a deeper story about the work that we did with this client. And maybe we want to talk about uh, key challenges that we faced in the project, key solutions, maybe add a slideshow. Um, sometimes a good idea, sometimes not. Um, that talks again in a, in a deeper way about how we worked with this client. And one thing I could certainly do is just start adding fields to the interface. I could add key problems, solutions, et cetera. But what happens if, you know, for one project I, wanna, uh, I want the slideshow to be above key challenges, key solutions, or in one, another project it's more relevant to use a different set of components. And this is the, the problem space where paragraphs is really good, where paragraph really sh paragraphs really shine. And when we think about content from an atomic design perspective, and maybe we think of these fields as atoms and the whole piece of content as the organism, paragraphs provide this intermediate level of like the molecule where we can build up molecules from these smaller parts. So if I go back to my managed content screen, we're gonna look at a slightly different version. Go over to the basic page. And with the basic page, I've just removed the content field and instead put in place a paragraph reference field, which we'll take a look at here in a second. Now I have a main image, some copy, some more copy about the key challenges, key solutions, a slideshow that I can click through. Obviously, all of this would need some custom styling and a lot of CSS work to really tell the story well. But we can certainly see the content components here for a more rich, more interesting case study about the work for this client. You can imagine I mean, the whole idea behind layout paragraphs which we'll, as we get into this um, is to design a system that works for content people, that works for marketers, that works for editorial staff. And you know, for us, that's often telling the story of how we work with clients. For others, it will be other things. It will be other types of, again, more rich articles built up of these components. Okay, so let's take a look at the edit screen. This hopefully is looking at just a paragraphs. So paragraphs just had a new release and they now have the, um, what was the experimental widget is now stable, which is awesome to see. So if we scroll down through here, what we were just looking at, the, this is the edit screen for the content to produce the content that we were just looking at. So we can see this image, first block of text, second block of text, third, another image, another image, scrolling down the page. If I want to rearrange these things, I can grab them and drag them up. And it works. It's a, it can be a little jumpy just relying on some of the table drag functionality. I know there's, there are modules that kind of simplify some of these interactions, but that's kind of the idea, is that again, the content is built up of these components, which is awesome. And has been, I mean, the, the usage for paragraphs is just huge. Everyone, essentially everyone has used work with paragraphs. Uh, in the Drupal space. Okay, what if though I want to even, I want even more control over presentation for these components? 
And what if I want to do something like um, create a column structure where maybe some of this text is in a left column, some is in a right, uh, quickly move items up and down. And further, if I'm in the edit screen, sometimes it can be a little challenging to keep track of where I am in the overall editing experience compared to what's in the front end. And there's some tools around that in paragraphs that again have come a long ways. We can collapse all of these and see kind of a overview. But all of this becomes a little bit challenging and very abstract. It's expecting a lot from content folks. In my view, the, the interface can be, uh, can come to expect a lot from content folks, especially as the size of the content really grows. That's where layout paragraphs is particularly powerful. Um, it is installed on this site, and we'll just take a quick look at how that works. So layout paragraphs, again, works within some of the typical Drupal constructs, fields, field formatters, field widgets, et cetera. If I go into the structure section, admin structure, go to content types, over to my basic page, manage form display. And with layout paragraphs enabled, I have a field widget called layout paragraphs. Simply switch to layout paragraphs for the field widget. Once you've selected layout paragraphs as your field widget, you need to go over to manage display and also choose layout paragraphs as the display. And that just will correctly render your layouts that you're creating. Go back to the content page, back to my basic page, Okay, and if we go back to the edit page, we remember what we were looking at just a second ago with the typical paragraphs interface. Now this has been taken over by layout paragraphs, and we can see that when we hit the edit screen, we're seeing more or less exactly in the edit screen what we would see on the view tab. So the, the, that kind of abstract separation between what we're working on and what the end user is seeing is no longer there. We're, we're working directly with the content as it's presented. Each component has a set of controls, uh, ranging from drag controls, uh, which does have mouse movements or, or keyboard, which I'll get into in a second. So drag controls, I can drag this item around, uh, up and down to just bump it up and down with the mouse. Edit to drill into and edit the paragraph or the component. Duplicate, which is particularly interesting, I'll do it here, but I'll do it again here in a minute. It's particularly interesting once you have nested items and are working with more complex layouts. And then of course, finally delete to delete a component. Um, we can easily drag these items around, but where layout paragraphs is, what it's really intended to do, of course, is combine layout with paragraphs. And for that, we, we have this uh, special dedicated paragraph type called a section that stores the section information. And we'll, we'll look at how this works here in a second as well. Um, all you have to do is create a new paragraph type and basically turn it on as a layout paragraph, and I'll show exactly how to do that. But if we add a new section, we can choose how many columns we want for our section. Choose a three column layout. It's immediately dropped into the interface. I'm gonna grab this paragraph and set it up there, and put this one on the left, and this one in the center, and this one off to the right, and that at least gives you a sense for the kind of the flexibility and the control over layout when it comes to working with layout paragraphs. Uh, we can continue, of course, we can continue this down the page. Uh, this is where that, that clone option gets a little more interesting also. If I clone an entire section, it clones the children of that section as well. I'll just get that out of there. Um, and that's really, very simply, what Layout Paragraphs is. It combines layouts with paragraphs in Drupal um, for much more control and again eliminates that kind of that abstract jump between what the editing experience is versus the view experience. Uh, to get this running, all one needs is uh, paragraphs installed and then layout paragraphs in installed. And if you install layout paragraphs using Composer, it of course will download paragraphs for you as well. 
once you have installed layout paragraphs, you will want to create a new paragraph type uh, that is responsible for storing the layout uh, data for your layouts, the section data for your layout. So if I go into paragraph types, I'm gonna take a look at just how that works. I'll start by finding the section. So we have the section paragraph. Um, there's nothing unusual about this paragraph type. This did not come with the module. This is a paragraph that I created after the module was installed. You can call it whatever you want. It doesn't have to be called section. You could call it layout. You could call it columns. You can call it container. I mean, really, you call it you know, whatever you want. Um, machine name as well, none of that matters. When you create the, this new paragraph type that you want to serve as the layout container for your project, you would simply come down under behaviors and check layout paragraphs to enable the layout paragraph behavior. Once the layout paragraph behavior is enabled, you'll have the ability to choose what layouts you wanna support. These layouts are provided with Drupal core. The layout API in Drupal core allows you to create your own layouts, associate those layouts with uh, behaviors through layout plugins, um, you know, adding custom styles, custom form elements, things like that. And of course, attach styles, uh, CSS, JavaScript behavior, et cetera. Folks often ask like, you know, is this responsive or how does this work with responsive? How does it work with my breakpoints? That's completely up to the designer of the layout. It's up to uh, the designer and developer of, of the layout. So that whole, that's totally up to the themer, totally up to what ships in core. When we use these two column, three column, et cetera, the CSS coming from Drupal core for those layouts is what's applied. That's how to turn it on. I mean, this, the section paragraph is just another paragraph type. Um, you can add fields if you want. If it made sense in your particular instance to have a section title or any other field, um, all of that would just work. And then once, actually once you add fields under the manage field section, maybe, or maybe it's the manage display section, um, which would make more sense, you can rearrange once you've added fields, you can rearrange where the um, layout would be rendered relative to the other fields that are on the page. And of course, all that can be managed through APIs as well. Let's take a look at some of the options that come just by default out of layout paragraphs. So if I go back into my, where am I at here? Content types and into basic page. Uh, manage the form display, take a look at layout paragraph. There are a few options. Um, one, you can change the view mode that you wanna render paragraphs in the edit screen. So if you had a different, if you had like an edit version, an edit screen version or preview version or what have you, um, or rather view mode for paragraphs, you can select that here. And that way maybe you're the admin version, the edit version has like a label for what the paragraph is or has some other distinctive piece that's just to that view mode. You can also nest layouts with layout paragraphs. That is, that's a feature that is, um, I think, unique to layout paragraphs when thinking about other layout management systems in Drupal. So we can say, let's support up to two levels deep. You can also choose whether or not you wanna require paragraphs to be added within a section first. So in some contexts, we only want sections to be at the main level, and all paragraphs have got to go into, into a section. In other contexts, we don't care. It's, it, we can use layout paragraphs to manage a flat list, and if they want to have you know, a paragraph, a normal paragraph followed by a section, totally fine. And we can choose that right here in the interface. I'll check that option just so we can see what that looks like. Um, that does get a little weird when there's already content, as we'll see here in a second. So if I go back to the edit screen, Oh, and especially since I didn't save my changes before. Um, now at the main level, I no longer have the option. I no long, longer have that plus button. I just have the option to add a section because I checked that toggle. When I hit add section, it skips the whole select a component thing, goes right to the, the section form. Choose how many columns I want. Uh, I'm gonna throw, actually I'll just leave that out for now. It does not mess with the existing content. So even though I now say sections are required, the content that wasn't in sections before, not touched. Um, I'm gonna add another section inside this section. This is gonna get a little weird. 
And then let's do another section inside that section. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. <laughs> and then, so we're, we're two levels deep. If you all were following, we're two, we're two levels deep. And once we get two levels deep, we can't add any more sections because of that setting. Um, we had to have a limit, I guess. Well, it's a drop down, so it made sense to have a limit. So you can go 10 levels deep. I don't think we've ever gone more than two levels deep. <laughs> I don't think we've ever gone more than one level deep, actually, but uh, there is that possibility. And again, there's no, with the underlying data model and with the way this works, there's no reason, there's no technical reason you couldn't. It's really totally up to, you know, what is the design of the interface you're trying to create? What's the experience that you're trying to create? And usually that would not be that many levels deep. But we can see kind of what that looks like to then move this text around. All right, one more thing I wanna look at before we get into a more customized version. I think just one more thing. Um, if I go back to structure, let me save this first. I'm a little scared with the, well, let's see, go back in. Okay, great, so we have, yeah, this. Uh, now crazy nested structure. Um, one thing that I think is really cool about layout paragraphs, if we go back to um, our content types, basic page, and now manage display, as I said earlier, you have to choose layout paragraphs for it to correctly render the display. So once you've you know, put everything into, your, into layouts and, and dragged everything around, I mean, if you're just using layout paragraphs to manage a flat list of paragraphs, and there's still some benefits there because just with the drag and drop controls, or at least I think so, um, depending on the use case, then I guess rendered entity would work. But if, it, if you're using the layout stuff at all, you'd want this to be layout paragraphs. You'd want the format to be layout paragraphs. We also have this layout paragraphs builder, which is an experimental field formatter. If I choose that and hit save, go back to content again. And this really gets to kind of the the heart of what we were trying to build is this idea of contextual editing, being, being able to really easily, so hitting the view tab and then hitting content, and now I'm editing this content the same way I was on the edit screen, but in the, the front end, on the front end of the site. And that gets really powerful. That means that you know, whatever the theme is that's running the front end of your site is what your users are editing in. Very powerful, also can require a lot of work. Because now, I mean, I, I don't know if it's the same for y'all, for us often in projects, the admin forms are minimally addressed or not addressed at all when we're doing public facing theming. When we're doing custom theme work, we're usually not styling the admin forms. Now we'd wanna take that into consideration. Because when you hit the edit, edit tab, when you're on the front end, you know, you're looking at that in that front end theme. Okay, that is layout paragraphs in a quick nutshell. Let me take actually a look at, um, we'll just look, there are a couple of sub modules that ship with layout paragraphs that I'll just talk about really briefly. So there's the layout paragraphs library module. That is an integration module that makes layout paragraphs work with the paragraphs library module. I don't know how many folks have used that before, but layout, the paragraphs library allows you to create reusable paragraphs. So you can create a library of paragraph or a library of components. This allow, this creates integration between layout paragraphs and that, so it just works. Um, you'll get like an add to library button across the bottom of your forms. And then layout paragraphs permissions adds some permission levels for saying what roles can do things like move paragraphs around, um, edit paragraphs, use those controls that are on the, uh, for each paragraph. Something else about la the layout paragraphs permissions module for developers in the room, it does also provide a really nice framework for working with permissions. So you can get a sense for how you might create permissions to let some folks do some things and, and not let other folks do other things. All right, so that's, I think, Layout paragraphs, um, again, out of the box on a simple D9 site. Let's kick this over to something a little bit more customized. 
Um, sound, looks like a lot of folks have seen this demo before. I'm gonna be doing the same thing. We're gonna take a look at a case study again. This is our agency's website. This is a local version of our agency's website. Um, I have been doing this demo on the live version, but I'm, I'm not trusting the internet today. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm, again, just gonna use case studies as an example. We'll go over to the admin content screen. Let's hope that loads. Need some loading music. All right, add new content. We'll start with a case study. Give this a title. Talk about some of our work with the city of Boulder. I'm gonna skip, this is just, uh, hopefully looks somewhat familiar to everyone, just a typical Drupal form. Um, one thing that is nice about layout paragraphs, I mean, it, because it is just attached to fields and works within the whole field, field format or field widget paradigm, it works with things like moderation and other features of Drupal. So I'm gonna leave this as an idea, hit save. And then this view tab, again, really speaks to kind of the, the direction we wanted to see this go and the kind of control that we wanted to provide authors. So now that I've created content, I have this simple message that says you haven't, you haven't actually added any content. A um, little confusing to have created content and see you haven't, had, you haven't created content yet. This title is completely customizable. It's just the title of the field. And the title of the field is content, so that would be whatever the title is and it's driven by a template, so if you wanted to change this piece entirely, you certainly can. Start creating content. We are using that setting to restrict what kind of content can be added. You have to start with a section. I'll add a section. We'll start with just a simple one column section. Let's see here, add masthead, which is maybe the most complex Types feel really small. Okay, great. Um, let's see here. We'll limit this. This interacts with media library or integrates with media library rather. Grab a couple of images. No, I don't want those two. I want these two. Hit place. I prefer the order of those like that. Hit save. And it drops that content immediately into the screen. Again, just being a really clear reflection of, of what we're trying to create. Uh, with this version, what the customizations that we have added on top of layout paragraphs, we have a custom style plugin, and it's, this is actually provided by another Drupal module called Style Options that provides uh, very easy to maintain a, a centralized YAML file for maintaining style options across an entire site. So we have this suite of style options, which are essentially CSS and other attribute decorators for HTML tags. Um, I'm gonna change this to light on dark change the background color, hit save, and again, we immediately see those changes uh, right in front of us in the interface here. We'll add another section, let's go with three column. I'm gonna bounce over here and copy some text. Again, one of the goals of layout paragraphs was to provide APIs for continuing to refine the authoring experience. Um, that's something that we're seeing here with this edit in place capability. This will soon be a module on drupal.org as well. This is a separate module that works specifically with layout paragraphs to provide this editing in place experience where when you add a text component, it just immediately drops that component into the screen. We'll go grab another paragraph of text here. Go back to our case study. Drop that in. Go back and add one more. Great, you can see how that's working. Um, another feature that is unique, as far as I know, to layout paragraphs, again, as far as uh, layout management tools are concerned, in Drupal is the ability to change columns once you've added a section, so you don't have to like delete your section and start over. You can go back in, if I decide I want this to be a two column, choose two column, the content that is in the third column would be lost or we have to do something with it. So this little interface just says, what do you wanna do with that content? And I'm gonna put it in the secondary 
column. So it's now added that content that used to be out on the right into the second column. Let's see, I'm gonna change just a couple more styles here and then add one more section. I think that'll about wrap it up. Um, let's do, so another thing that's provided by style options is the ability to choose styles specific to each region. So I'm gonna switch over to the primary region and choose padded for the primary region, give it a background color. And again, we can see those changes immediately take effect right here. Add one more section here, do a one column, give this a background color. I should have done that while it was still open. And let's add some text in here. This goes back to our wanting to have this key challenges piece. And then just depending on the project, I mean, for some folks, it might make sense to have a paragraph type called key challenges, just depending on how structured you want your content to be versus how kind of atomic or granular or um, just up to the design, you know, each it, the, the use case of the particular project. Let's give this an actual list style. Let's do a little bit of editing here on the screen. Um, again, we have this custom styles library. So if I go into my component now, hit styles, choose horizontal list, we can see those changes again immediately take effect. Um, and those are all just custom styles that we've created for this, this project. That's, and that's attaching CSS that, you know, uh, a themer can decide exactly what is right for their project. I said I was only gonna do one more section. I'm gonna do one more, I promise that's it. Um, I'm gonna do a three column real quick. Oh, once again, I should have stayed in there. I'm gonna change the background color. Blue, light on dark, grab some more text. Pretty bold statement. Let's see here. Then one thing that's really nice working within this framework is that as you're adding these components, again, you're not seeing an abstracted representation of, say, a slideshow but you're able to actually view the slideshow as you're building it. So if I grab a handful of images, and place them into the interface again, it just drops them immediately into the interface. Um, I could go in if I wanted to, and as I said before, you can change these column structures later. So if I decided that that center column should actually be wider, I'll go to this other version, hit save, and that becomes a little wider looking just a little bit nicer. Great. Um, that's most of what I have to show y'all today. Let me just quickly go back to, I'm gonna leave this and not save it. Um, I wanna take a look just really quick at a fully developed case study and just look at kind of what the, the workflow is like to hit edit, scroll down the page and again, one of the big values in this is an interface without that, that strong layer of abstraction, like the fact that you can see, really have a clear representation of what you're working on. So if we hit edit content, double check that I'm on a local version. <laughs> um, yeah, so as I scroll down the page, all of this is just completely editable and really easy to keep track of exactly what I'm doing. Um, you know, as I'm making edits, it's making ADEX calls to save these into the temp store, just kind of the underneath how this is working. Um, can drag these items around. There are keyboard controls, as I said before, so if I click on that drag handle, I can move this around with the keyboard. Um, that's a huge convenience just for moving components up and down a large screen. It also was built with accessibility in mind and while we're still working on kind of the full, a full accessibility review for this module, there are tab controls for everything once I get down here. So you can see the controls that are highlighted. Um, that one gets chopped off a little funny, but let's get down here to, yeah, so, and then once I get to the drag handles, it says drag or click. If I press enter, 
I can now move this item around. Um, again, just showing some drag controls there. And again, just like a really clear representation in the front end of what, what you're editing. That is everything I have to demo. I think we've got a few minutes still, plenty of time actually for questions. Let me bounce back to this deck real quick. Um, I should say, as I said earlier, we are giving away an, a iPad and AirPods if you guys are into QR codes and wanna grab that while we're talking, that's great. And otherwise, that's it as far as what I have to demo and I'd love to hear any questions. Uh, here I saw. That's a great question. So I, th I think what you're asking is, are the permissions controls specific to layout paragraphs? Is that right? And specific to the columns available in layout paragraphs? Yeah, yeah. Um, right. Yep. So is there a way to contain users into using specific layout paragraphs? Great, great question. Yes, there's a few ways to do that. One is there is a underlying API for just working with permissions. And again, that permission submodule that ships with layout paragraphs would be a great place to start. So copy that and just kind of dig into the code there. And you can, there, there are not permissions specific to what you're describing, but you can certainly build on top of that to, uh, to enable that in your context. That's, that's kind of part one. Part two is you can define different types of sections. So we looked at that earlier on, like if, when you create a section paragraph type, the only thing that makes that a section paragraph type is that you checked the layout paragraphs behavior. So you could have three or four, I mean, as many as you want different sections, manage those with permissions and have each section type mapped to, you know, for those section types only enable the, the layouts you want. And that's another way that you could get that control. Um, it also, because this is a, it, you know, because it works with paragraphs and with fields, you can have, there, there's no limit on the number of fields you could have even on a single content type and then manage permissions that way as well. Um, we often do like a, a hero image field, still manage with layout paragraphs just for consistency sake, but it only allows one component type. And then we'll do, you know, the content field down below, if that makes sense. That also gives a, a lot of that, that control for permissions. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thanks. Great, thanks. Who else? Right here. Um, you mentioned that there was another module for what you were doing to edit text in place. What, what was that? Was that just CK5 editor or was that a different module? Great question. So that works with CK editor 5 or 4. Right now it's a custom module of ours. Um, it's a part of a product called Mercury that we've been working on for a while. Um, it will be released soon. Mercury will be released soon, but the components of Mercury will also be released, and that's one that just hasn't been released yet. Um, and the only reason is it's just not, not quite ready for public, for broad consumption um, and broad support. Um, but it is running on CK Editor 5 and 4, similar to Quick Edit, except that the challenge with Quick Edit is Quick Edit saves the content to the database right then and there. We need to save content to that temp store, to the Layout Paragraphs um, Foundation. So does that... Yeah. Make sense? Great. Um, here, yeah. Um, not in the middle of the question over there, the first one, is governance, right? So you have a layout, and you talk about the things that do this, but you have two columns. There are a few missing paragraphs, right? So you run a test that aren't appropriate, and you expect them to do the same thing. Layout? How do you get around that? Can you, can you set the layout so you get what sorts of paragraphs to be inserted into the two-column layout? Yeah, so uh, again, kind of a multi-part answer. Great question, something that we are actively working on right now that will probably be a separate module, not even a sub-module. I feel like it's, it's a different enough, that kind of needs its own maintenance trajectory um, and its own issue queue. There is an API for doing that, and 
that the, com the list of components that we saw, there's an event that gets broadcast kind of under the hood what's happening is there's an event that's dispatched. You can capture that event, you can listen to that event, restrict that list down to whatever you want to. Um, there's APIs, there's rather JavaScript APIs doing the same thing where you can write code that says, okay, you cannot drag this kind of paragraph into this kind of container. You would have to write that code. The simplest way to do that without writing code right now would be to have, again, two different fields where one's collection of um, layout types and paragraphs is available on one and another is available on the other, which isn't, will serve some use cases, but it, uh, that restrictions uh, problem is something that we're working on. There will be a module for that soon. And there actually is a module for the 1x version, um, if I remember correctly, that does just that. And to be honest, I haven't, I haven't played much with it. I'm not sure how it works. Who else? Uh, down here. Yes, so the trick is that it will use whatever you have set as the backend theme for your site. So if, you have, if you've done a bunch of, of customization to the paragraph template for the front end of your site, and you haven't done any of that, and whatever you're using as your admin theme, it's going to show that paragraph, that component, uh, just using that, those default styles, the default template from the backend theme. There's a lot of different ways you can customize it. You could write a custom module and ship the code in a module. You could write a, a custom admin theme that um, descends from or that inherits your, you know, uses that, your other theme as a base theme. There's a few ways around that. But no, basically when you hit, when you hit edit on that paragraph, you're gonna see the edit form for the paragraph. So however complicated it is, that's what you're gonna see. And then yeah, when you hit save and it renders it, it'll just render it using whatever template is in the theme you're looking at right there. So that, that whole problem of um, trying to pull in other styles, or I mean, that's just kind of outside of the scope of layout paragraphs. Does that make sense? Yes. Great. Yeah? Uh, when you set up uh, a layout paragraph for an example of a section list, yep. uh, does that change the IP address of the, for the content type? Or can that even handle the, the different section names, different staff sections, different sites, different things connected to it? Or Yeah, I'm glad you're, at, you're asking that. I think this is a really important point. Um, no, it is just a flat list. So the section is referenced the same way that whatever paragraph precedes it and whatever paragraph comes after it. And it's actually like the underlying structure is very flat. So you have you know, the paragraph above it, then the section would be the next thing referenced. The first paragraph in that section would be the next thing referenced. The next one would be the next reference. If the next one's a section, that's the next one in the list. Um, and the reason for that, I mean, the working with nested paragraphs gets one insanely complicated from a editorial perspective and was the whole thing we wanted to get away from. That's what we were, we were largely doing and just felt like this is not a drag and drop, a real drag and drop experience for our, for our clients. Um, but the other piece is the performance piece. You know, with nest, I mean, entity references are totally worth it, but a little expensive anyways from a performance perspective. They're worth it, in my view, it goes all back to that whole structured content idea. Um, once you start nesting entities, especially if you're nesting them just to have a layout container, uh, just as it from, you know, we, w we really wanted to do away with that. Great, who else? Back. Yeah, great question. We use both in a lot of our projects. Um, for us, this is an editorial tool. It's a tool for content editors, for editorial staff, and for marketers. And we use Layout Builder as more of a site builder tool. Um, by design, I mean, the design of each is really different too. They use some of the same systems, so it can be a little complicated to explain. But 
this is managing paragraphs which are typed in a completely different way. Like it, you, you design the paragraph first, you, just say, you say what fields are available in your paragraph, you then say what paragraphs can be attached to the content that you're concerned with, the content type. Whereas Layout Builder by default is a, a very powerful drag and drop interface for all blocks in the Drupal system. It's a way to, it's a way to, accept, you know, to access all blocks in the Drupal system and a replacement, I mean it's not just this, but a replacement for like the blocks admin page. Um, not just that <laughs> by a long shot, but we, we use layout, layout Builder in most of our projects. We use Layout Paragraphs in most of our projects also. Uh, layout Paragraphs would take over kind of the content area and we use Layout Builder for what's around it. All right, who was? Uh, Mine was just kind of connected to that one. Well, go, yeah, please, go ahead. My, my follow-on to that was, so then, would you say you would use Layout Paragraphs for your editor who's gonna maybe build a landing page, but Layout Builder is what the site builder is doing for some of the other content types, but users don't get to decide where stuff goes, but you're using it for Layout, is that? That's the difference for us. Okay. Yeah, and I know there are a lot of folks who have implemented Layout Builder for their content editors, and it can, I mean, it, it can be a very powerful tool for that use case. Um, you know, this, the whole goal for Layout Paragraphs was to make it easy for content editors, to make it easy for people who work with content. We wanted something you can turn on, now I can drag paragraphs around, I can see what I'm working on, it's very easy to use. Layout Builder is so powerful, there's a lot of complexity that comes with it, and you know, a lot of the work in implementing Layout Builder is trying to rein that back in, trying to simplify that, at least in our experience. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we try to do is, like for your case studies, when we have a consistent look and feel, like this is how a case study should look inside. But then we want to give them the power to say, hey, this is how it's going to be a look and feel. Is there any way to provide that default, create a case study, click save, boom, all that content's built out, like a placeholder in there, like a page to image, a page to text, is there any way to do anything like that? The short answer is no, um, not right now. So working on templates with layout paragraphs is something that is kind of, is in the, it's next. Um, or it's coming soon. It will be a separate module and it's, you know, we're trying to figure that out as well. Honestly, that's something that Layout Builder is really good at. If you guys have worked with Layout Builder, like Layout Builder, you can take over a node screen, say where everything goes, and then you can break out of that on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, layout paragraphs is much more for free form content that varies widely from one, or you know, might vary widely from one section to the next, or doesn't need those kind of pre-built templated um, components. I mean, we sometimes use like the replicate module to just to clone something, and, and that's kind of a, a simple um, approach to templating. And I think when we do get to templates, it'll be something like that, where there's like a, exactly, it, under the hood, that's what it'll be, which is a very different model than Layout Builder. Great. Over here. I just had a question about translations. Uh, if you create a page in English, can you translate it to Spanish and have it inherit everything that you created, or is it like the node is empty and you start over? It inherits everything. So it, we, we made the decision to support, for better or worse, uh, synchronous and asynchronous translation. So you can, there are a couple different ways it can be configured. Um, one is that it makes a complete copy of everything and you, and you can only translate each individual paragraph. Um, the other would be, you know, for each language, you basically get a different version of that content and you can completely customize it to that language. Uh, we, a lot of our clients, translation is a big deal um, and it seemed important to support both, so. Uh, like yeah, great question. Pretty well. <laughs> um, yeah, so <laughs> we, we use a block reference field from a paragraph, and so we'll create like a web form, expose it as a block. I mean, there's a few hoops to jump through, just like Drupal. <laughs> um, but we'll, we'll create a web form, expose it as a block, do a block reference field, and then drag that around. There was a problem for a little while. One thing that's really tricky is when you render a form in, in Drupal, it wants to run that form as a form with all the like form submit, you know, all the behavior attached to that form. So there was, there's a weird work around, there was a weird work around in the module to make, to kind of strip all that out of the form. So it works great, 
Um, if you run into issues, though, open something in the issue queue, please. <laughs> Who else? I know. Yeah. Um, how does it work with the search API? Oh, that's a great question. Um, again, I think well. <laughs> so it uses paragraphs, which works with the search API well. So search the content that is sent to the search API would include the paragraphs content and you should be able to tune that the same way you tune any other content within Drupal, um, scoring the various like paragraph types, fields, et cetera. You can say, um, it's been a little while since I worked with the search API, but you should be able to say what of those paragraphs is sent with the containing node to the search API to be indexed. So that, and that's, that's again why we wanted to create something that you know, worked well with existing systems. Um, and the, at the end of the day, this is just, it just creates like a visual layer on top of something that already exists rather than creating a whole different API or subsystem. Great question. How much information do you get from a search API from, from the API? Oh, that's a great question too. Um, you get information from, so we actually just started a project where we're doing this. There are other folks, it's been it, really fun to be involved in this and kind of see where other people are taking it. I know there are other folks in the community um, who have already tackled this problem um, or, or ta you know, been working on this challenge. The paragraphs, it, so it's just, use, it, the storage is in the paragraph behavior. It's stored as serialized uh, array structures, basically. Um, it, yeah, serialized objects. No, I guess it's an array structure. So that will come out as a field in the JSON API, and then you can structure that however you want to. So that ships, you know, the information at the paragraph level the par a paragraph will say which paragraph is its parent via the, uh, its UUID um, and what region it belongs to in that parent. And so you can parse that however you want to in your you know, headless app and uh, present the content however you want. I don't think so, but tell me a little bit more. In what way? I guess like from our content is if we have like somebody who is custom on like articles, it's sometimes hard to render those things in like a, a PDB. Oh, great question. Yeah. So yeah, there's a couple ways you could handle that. Um, one, I, I mean the short answer is no, I have not run into a problem with that. There are a couple ways I've gone about solving that kind of thing. Um, one would be, and actually I'm not sure. So one would be to just make sure that you have sufficient fields or metadata, really just fields associated with your content to drive that view. So even though I'm building most of the, you know, the, the view tab, the, what, the client, what the end user actually sees uh, or experiences with the content, I also have fields for primary image or for you know teaser image for title for description of the project which is used to drive something like this which would be a more traditional view although i think we're actually using layout paragraphs to move these items around um, but they are teasers that we're moving around if that ever loads so yeah so this is a teaser of this case study and that's just using typical even though it's in the context of this layout paragraphs thing but that's just using a, you know, a main image. Feels like, it, like you always would in Drupal, if that makes sense. The other thing we could have done and we talked about doing is using that masthead paragraph, rendering that masthead paragraph from our case study. So if I click into this, oh, it's not gonna let me because it thinks I wanna edit the text. Um, but there's that, for us, our, our case studies always start with this masthead thing and we could have just rendered that in teasers, which would have worked pretty well too. So, you know, one thing we often, we've standardized on a bunch of stuff in Drupal, as I'm sure everybody here has, and one thing we still talk about all the time, there's like 100 right ways to do the same thing, sometimes 100 wrong ways. <laughs> See if I can get in here now. I think we are just about out of time. Okay, so here's that mass head component I was talking about, and we could have chosen to show those as the teaser if we wanted to, and again, it just worked, like, because it's just paragraph content, you can you, you have a lot of flexibility flexibility with how you set it up. I think we got time for one more. Yep. 
Yeah, let's see how fast this edit screen comes up, if I can show you real quick. Uh, we have solved that just with a custom style option, back to that module I was talking about. The, that's happening in a custom layout API plugin, and we have right here column stacking left to right or right to left, which is the rule that we've set up for in this context that says, do we want this to collapse with the left coming first or with the right coming first? I think that's what you're asking, is that correct? And that's just, that's in the, the um, layout plugin. Style options, which, which is another module on drupal.org, makes that easier, um, but that would need to be like a custom layout uh, plugin. Hey, thanks everybody for your time. Um, and I'd love to talk more about this if anybody wants to. Come find me after. Thanks. <laughs>